Inhale, stretch your arms up, push your hips forward, reach back, really push the hips far forward, look up. Very good, exhale, reach forward, and all the way down, hands beside your feet, head is down all the way. If you need to bend your knees, go ahead and do that, don't worry. Head is hanging down, good. Now, inhaling, step your right leg back, a big step, knee down, point your toe, look up. Curl your toes, step the left leg back, make a straight line through your body, looking at the floor, plank position, this is kind of a pause. Exhale, take your knees down, chest down, chin or forehead down, hips up. Point your toes, inhale, lift and open your chest forward, elbows bending, head back, push the chest forward. Curl your toes under, exhale, lift your hips up very high, keep the feet where they are. Push your heels towards the floor, but don't adjust the position of the feet. Good. Inhale, step your right foot all the way forward to your hands. Drop your left knee and point your toe on the left. Look up, hips down. Exhale, step the left foot beside the right, hands down, head down all the way. Now reaching forward, inhale, push your hips out. Hips moving far forward, reach back. Exhale, release. Inhale deeply. Exhale, palms together at your heart. Inhale, stretch up, reach back, push your hips forward all the way. Good. Exhale, reach forward all the way down. Hands beside your feet, head down all the way. Inhale, step your left leg back, big step, knee down, point your toe, look up. Step the right leg back, hold your breath, plank position. Exhale, knees down, chest down, forehead down. Good, point your toes, inhale, open your chest forward, elbows bending, head back. Curl your toes under, exhale, lift your hips very high, look towards your feet. Inhale, left foot all the way forward to meet your hand. Exhale, right foot beside, hands down, head down, reach forward, inhale, push your hips out, reach back, reach up. Exhale, release, inhale deeply, exhale, palms together, inhale, up, reach back, look up. Exhale, reach forward and down, hands down, head down. Inhale, right leg back, point your toe. Step up the left leg back, hold your breath, plank position. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or forehead down. Point your toes, inhale, open your chest forward. Curl your toes, exhale, take step very high, look at your feet. Inhale, right foot all the way forward to meet your hand. Exhale, left foot beside, head down. Reach forward, inhale, hips out, reach back. Exhale, release. Inhale, exhale, palms together at your heart. Inhale, up, reach back, look up. Exhale, reach forward and down, head down. Inhale, left leg back, point your toe. Step the right leg back, hold your breath, plank. Exhale, knees, chest, forehead down, hips up. Point your toes, inhale, open your chest forward. Exhale, hips up, look towards your feet. Inhale, left foot all the way to your hands, look up. Exhale, right foot beside, head down, reach forward. Inhale, hips moving far forward. Exhale, release, good. Inhale, exhale, palms together. Inhale, up, reach back, look up. Exhale, reach forward and down. Inhale, right leg back, point your toe. Step the left leg back, hold your breath. Exhale, knees, chest, forehead, or chin down. Inhale, open your chest forward. Exhale, hips up, look towards your feet. Inhale, right foot all the way to your hand. Exhale, left foot beside, head down. Reach forward, inhale, hips out, reach back. Exhale, release, inhale. Exhale, palms together. Inhale, up, reach back, look up. Exhale, reach forward and down, head down. Inhale, left leg back, point your toe. Step the right leg back, hold your breath. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or forehead down. Inhale, open your chest forward and back. Curl your toes, exhale, lift, lifting high. Inhale, left foot to your hands. Exhale, 
exhale, right foot behind, head down, reach forward, inhale, next up, reach back, exhale, release, inhale, exhale, palms together, inhale, up, reach back, exhale, forward and down, inhale, right leg back, hold your breath, plank position, body straight, exhale, knees, chest, forehead down, inhale, open your chest forward, Exhale, lift up, look at your feet. Inhale, right foot to your hand. Exhale, left foot beside head down. Reach forward, inhale, reach out, reach back. Exhale, release, inhale. Exhale, palms together. Inhale, up, reach back. Exhale, reach forward and down. Inhale, left leg back, reach your toe. Hold the breath, right leg back, plank. Exhale, knees, chest, forehead down. Inhale, open your chest forward. Exhale, mix up, look at your feet. Inhale, left foot to your hands. Exhale, right foot beside, head down. Reach forward, inhale, mix up. Exhale, release, inhale. Exhale, palms together. Inhale, up, reach back, look up. Exhale, forward and down. Inhale, right leg back. Hold your breath, plank position. Exhale, knees, chest, forehead down. Inhale, open your chest forward. Exhale, lips up, look at your feet. Inhale, right foot to your hand. Exhale, left foot beside head down. Reach forward, in. Inhale, lips up, reach back. Exhale, release, inhale. Exhale, palms together. Inhale, up, reach back. Exhale, forward and down. Inhale, left leg back. Hold your breath, plank position. Exhale, knees, chest, forehead down. Inhale, open your chest forward. Exhale, hips up, look at your feet. Inhale, left foot to your hands. Exhale, right foot beside, head down. Reaching forward. Inhale, hips up, reach back. Exhale, and release. Good. But just standing with your arms by your side. So slow down your breathing here. A couple of you I can't see. Bhuvan, I can't see you at all. I see your shoulder. But I'd like to see if you're practicing. And so just standing, take a moment or two here. Feel your knees a little bit soft, shoulders relaxed. Close your eyes, let your arms hang. And slow down your breathing. So the exhalation is more complete, a little slower. Good. And then in your own way, come down, slowly rest on your back in Shavasana, on your mat, or pose. So feet are wide apart. Arms comfortably away from your body. Hands relaxing, feet relaxing, all the facial muscles relaxing, and try to slow down your breathing. important before backward bending the body is warm. And if you notice, the Surya Namaskar prepares the body in a way for forward bending and backward bending. You're going through a series of movements where you're doing both. So through the spine bending forward and bending back. Letting go.
a deeper breath. And slide your feet together. Stretch your arms over your head for a moment. Clasp your fingers and press your palms out and up. Give a long stretch to the body and release. Oh, good. So we'll do uh, not very much, a little bit of single leg raising, and then we'll do a few double leg raises. So for the single, bring your legs together. Fix your palms down by the side of your body. We won't focus too much here today. But with an inhalation, uh, very good, Cindy. Raise your right leg up. Very good. Exhale down. So moving with the breath. Inhale, left leg up. Good. Knee is straight. Exhale down. Inhale, right leg up. Keep the left leg firm on the floor. Exhale down. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale down. One more time. Inhale, right leg up. Pause here for a moment, keep it firm, try to breathe here. Both knees are straight, one leg firm on the floor, other leg foot is flexed, knee straight, that's it, breathe. And exhale down, good. Inhale, left leg up, last one. Stay here, breathe, keep the right leg very firmly pressed into the floor. Flexing your feet, breathe, and exhale down, good. So we'll do two different um, versions of a kind of abdominal exercise here today. So the first, uh, keep your hands fixed down by your side. We'll do the double leg raises as usual. Make sure your hands are not under the body, they're out at the side, the side the hips. Now, flexing your feet with an inhalation, raise both legs up. Hold it here, shoulders on the floor, hands firm. Make sure the shoulders stay down. And then exhale, lower your legs down. Keep the knees straight, very good. Inhale, up, Shambhala, very good. Exhale, down. Moving smoothly, inhale, up. Good. Exhale down, knees straight. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good. Now inhale, raise your legs up. For a moment, bend your knees in towards your chest. Keep your hands on the floor. So we're going to try something a little bit different now. If you have strong abdominal muscles, raise your arms straight over your head like Superman. Uh, if they're not so strong, keep them down by your side. And then you're going to inhale a breath. As you exhale, stretch both legs straight out at 45 degrees. 45 degrees, that's 90. Level. Okay, good. And then exhale, bring the knees back into the chest. Good. Good. Exhale, stretching out. You can even point your toes a little bit, 45 degrees. Good. Inhale, bring them back into your chest. Come on, that's perfect. Exhale, slowly stretching out. Reach out, knees straight, 45 degrees. Very good, everyone. Yeah. Inhale, bring them back into the chest. A little different breathing than what you might be used to. Exhale, reaching straight out. Very good. Inhale, back into your chest. Very good, we'll do this two more times. Exhale, reach straight out. Inhale, bring it back in again. Now last time, exhale, reach the leg straight out and try to hold it here, breathing comfortably. So if, uh, stay there with the knees straight, 45 degrees. If it's too much at any point, Bend the knees, bring them into your chest again. But try to hold there a couple of breaths. Yep, stay there. Anita, perfect. Meenakshi, very good. Mitsuyo, very good. Shama, perfect. Yachi, Yamuna, everybody's doing it good. Now, bring the knees back into your chest. 
Good, wrap your arms around, hug them tightly, so you're hugging your knees now. Make a few circles with your lower back, feel that you're massaging the back. We're going to focus a lot on the lower back today. Good. And now straighten your legs up and exhale, lower them down at your own pace. Relax on your back, in Shavasana, feet apart, palms open. Close your eyes, still your body. Breathe and relax just for two or three breaths here. So to be comfortable with backward bending, the front of the body obviously needs to be prepared a little as well and having stronger um, abdominal muscles does help. Of course, we can develop in a way those muscles by doing the backward bending as well. By taking a lot of care with the breath, as I mentioned before. Now slide your feet together, stretch your arms overhead, point your toes, reach out, give a very long stretch to your body, and release. Good. Now come up on your mat and over to sit on your heels in Vajrasana. Um, Raffle is doing so you can always take a look. So then what you'll do is um, reach the arms out as far forward as you can on the floor. So walk the hands out. Let the chest rest down. The child's pose, but your arms are outstretched. Good. So this is um, sometimes called Balasana. So feel that the elbows are not bending, the arms are kind of straight, but you're just breathing here and feeling that, imagine that the spine and the arms are forming one straight line. Good, just breathe here. Hello, little Kristen. You know, my little yogi coming. Very nice. Bye. <laughs> Now walk your hands back in towards yourself and sit up on your heels. So let's do a little stretch for the shoulders. So um, sitting on your heels nicely. Um, this also helps with the back of bending if the shoulders are a little bit flexible. So raise the right arm up, bend the elbow and touch your hand down uh, just on the back of your neck or between the shoulders. See if you can reach the other arm up and clasp your fingers together. If you're not able to clasp the fingers, you can always take a little piece of cloth or something like that and hold it in between. Okay. So sitting up really tall, lift your head up high, and push your head back against the arm. Breathe here. So if you're doing it right, the arms in the back are landing just in the upper back in such a way that you're uh, it's forcing you to open the upper part of the chest a little bit. So this is an excellent preparation for the backward bend. Now inhale a deeper breath, and as you exhale, fold forward, and let your chest rest down on the knees. And just stay here for a breath or two. Very good. This is a version of Gomukhasana, cow face. Good, breathe. And then inhale, sitting back up and changing the arms. Shake, if your arms are uncomfortable, give them a little shake first and then take the left arm up, bend at the elbow, touch your hand between your shoulders, take the other hand up behind, clasp your fingers together, sit up very tall. Lifting your head up, push your head back against your arm, take a couple of deep breaths here. In fact, spending some time here will help a lot with the backward bending. Very good. Now inhale, and as you exhale, stretch forward, taking your chest to the legs. Head to the floor if you can. Breathe here. Holding, keep breathing. And then 
inhale, sitting back up again. Good. Shake out your arms if they're uncomfortable. And then come up to stand on your mat. So we'll do um, going back and forth a little bit between a forward bend and a backward bend from a standing position. So Rahul is standing. If you can, feet are together. If you don't feel stable, you can take them slightly apart. Reach behind your back and clasp your fingers together. So feet together. So inhale, open your chest wide, and as you exhale, stretch forward and down. So you're bringing first the chest down, the ribs down, the head down, stretching your arms over the back of your head. Breathe here. Uh, Kamalji, very good. Stay here. Sinda. So the last step is taking the arms a little further over your head. Take your arms in close to your back again. Inhale, come back up to stand. And now keep your hands in this clasped position. Push your hips forward and stretch the hands down the back side of your legs. Now, you can see Rahul is you take the hands all the way down to the knees if you can. Keep going, sliding the hands further down. Dorothy, very good. So if your lower back does not feel comfortable here. You can take a less intense version by just placing your hands on your back and moving that forward, forward and stretching back. So that is possible as well. Okay, now inhale, standing back up again. We'll do this one more time. So clasp your hands. Inhale, open the chest. Elbows are straight. Exhale, stretch forward. Take your Chest down, ribs down, head down. Good. The last step is arms come over the back of your head a little bit. Make sure your knees are straight here, taking deeper breaths. So examine that it's always if we go a little bit deeper into the breath, we can go a little bit deeper into the asana. Good. Amen. That's good. Reach up, very good. Don't bounce, just stay steady, breathe. Good, now take your arms back in towards your back. We were forward, then we can go back again. Okay. And then again, push the hips forward, slide the hands down the back of your legs. Sounds bigger. <laughs> okay. All right, so pushing the hips far forward, you've got it. Cinda, very good. Samir, good. Imagine you want to take the hands a little further down the back of the legs, so Tara hips moving far forward, that's it. Yeah. Okay, breathe. And actually, that's good. You can, you can um, make that adjustment by holding the hips if it's not really comfortable. Good, inhale back up to center. Okay. Now come down to your mat. So we're going to move through some different backward bends now, building up slowly. Um, and so we'll rest, not after each asana necessarily, but we'll rest um, here and there as we go. At any moment, of course, if it's too much for you, you can rest. Um, you can also release from an asana and come back in again if you want to do that. So come down and we'll start today with um, the bridge. Okay, we don't think of it as a backward bend, but it is. And so we'll use it to prepare for some of the others. So you're lying on your back and you're going to bend the knees and step the feet in close to your hips. So the feet, very important here, the feet should be hip width apart. They should not be, the feet should not be together here. And um, if you can, reach and hold the ankles. Let's do this today. We'll do it two ways. If you're not able to reach and hold the ankles, just place your hands down flat on the floor. That's okay also. Okay. So now head straight, shoulders down. With an inhalation, push with your feet and lift the hips as high as you can. So hips moving very high, stretching the top of your thighs. 
And then as you exhale, feel that you're moving the chest up higher towards your chin. Kind of two things happening here. Um, Sinda, your hands can hold the ankles or they can just be on the floor, hands pressing down on the floor. That's good. Very good. Breathe here. So imagine you want to make a lock of the chest towards your chin. Amen, that's very good. Shakti, that's good. Yachi, good. Mitsu, you're very nice. So lifting higher. Examine whether there are points in the body that are holding back a little bit. This is the thing. Maybe you can roll the shoulders, top of the shoulders down more towards the floor. Sometimes we hold back without realizing it. So just checking in, breathing deeply. So see if you can notice the diaphragm in the breath. Imagine it playing back and forth between this uh, air and fire elements within the body. And then releasing, lower your hips down to the floor. Keep your feet in position and just rest there for a moment. Good. Let's work a little bit next on, I'm changing my mind as I go here, which is, which is nice, because I'm looking at you, I'm getting inspired. So let's go next into Chakrasana. But don't go in your usual habits of how you may come up, okay, if you're already coming up. I want you to focus on a few certain things today. So um, bring your feet a little closer to your hips if you can. And then take a lot of care when you position the hands. So many people take the hands in very close to the neck and then they're not able to lift off the floor. So it's good to take it slowly. Position the hands so the fingers first are stretched really nice and wide. And then you're positioning the hands under your shoulders. So ideally, the shoulders are farther apart, the elbows are pointing straight up towards the ceiling. So just take a moment with that position, feel the hands, try to stretch the fingers out wider and feel if you can take, imagine or sense the hands, whether they can take the weight, okay? The main problem for people is this uh, hands are too close to the neck, okay? Now breathing here, I'd like you to try to come up with an exhalation, so we'll get there in a moment. When you can come up, don't reposition the hands, don't reposition the feet, keep them just as they are. So inhale a little more deeply. As you exhale, lift all the way up. Usually we come up with an inhale, so try with an exhale. Uh, and you can also come up part way onto the crown of your head if you're not able to lift up. I think almost everyone's up. Good. Very good. Breathe here. Keep the hands and feet where they are. And then we're going to rock forward and back a few times. So imagine you want to straighten your knees. So focus mainly on the legs. Don't reposition the feet. Come on. Keep them where they are. You're walking away here. Okay. Straighten the knees each time you rock. Don't move the feet. It's okay. Good. Very good. That's it. And as you straighten the legs a little bit more, you feel that the shoulders get more of a stretch. The weight comes more over the hands. Dorothy, that's perfect. Good. Breathing there. So try this a couple of times. This is the best way to develop the flexibility in the wheel. Very good. Okay. Good. Now tuck your chin and lower back down to the floor. Okay. And if you feel a little tender in your lower back, don't hesitate to pull the knees towards your chest and hug your arms around the legs for a moment. Um, Bhuvan, <laughs> that's good. But a little fast, take it slow. Good. Okay. So let's try one more time this Chakrasana, and then we'll try something a little bit different today as I decided to jump in you guys are so inspiring today. Okay. So let's try that one more time. So place your feet really close to the hips. Use your hand to pull it in. This time we'll try the variations as we come up. Okay? And then we'll try to step the hands and feet a little closer to one another. So position the hands under your shoulders. We have a lot of good backward benders today. 
Breathing, elbows point straight up to the ceiling. So Sinda, try to take the elbows a little closer to one another. That's it. Okay. Now breathing, inhale. And as you exhale, push up. Nice, smooth movement up. Very good. Okay. Breathing here. Uh, Rashmi, that's good. Take the hands in a little closer and then see if you can push up more. You're on the crown, which is halfway. That's very good. Okay, breathe. Now, try raising the right leg up, point your toe. Most of you know these variations that can come up perfect. Not to be good. And lower it down. Nice. Raise the left leg up, point your toe. Very good. Okay, now right hand up. Touch your thigh with your hand. Yes. Good, lower it down, come on, perfect. Raise the left hand up, touch your thigh. Good, lower it down. Now, just like an inch we're inching along the floor, you can try stepping your feet in closer or you can try inching the hands in a little closer towards your feet. So the name of this asana comes when we close the gap, actually, hands and feet come together. So it may not happen today, but just take a little step in, even bend the knuckles and sort of bring the hand in a little closer and see how that feels. Good, you can try the same rocking a little bit forward and back, Minashi, that's good. Very nice. Good. Bravo, what's happening? <laughs> you need that. Okay. All right, now step the feet away from the hands a little bit or the hands away from the feet. And tuck your chin. Lower the back of your neck to the floor. Lower your hips next to the floor. And then pull your knees in towards your chest. Hug them tight. Good. And take a little, a few circles with your lower back. And imagine that you're massaging the lower back. So that was very good. And we'll just relax for a moment. You can stay, if you like, in this knees into your chest position, or you can uh, come into the corpse pose, Shalasana, as you like. Just breathe and relax. Something we're going to try. Um, going to try a couple of things at once. The end result is an asana called um, Ekapada Chakrasana. So we were just working on chakrasana. So this is the right moment. What we're doing here, we have a couple of ways to do it. And for today, um, maybe we'll show coming from the headstand. So if you're able to do the headstand. Um, don't do it yet, just watch what Ravel is doing, and then we'll show you another way to come if the headstand is not working for you, you can try a different way, okay? So what he'll do is he'll measure the arms as usual, and he'll come through the steps for the headstand. Yeah, so interlacing the fingers, placing the crown of the head down, all the usual steps he'll do, but he'll come up into the headstand. So just watching to see what he's doing, very good. Now, once he's in the headstand, he'll take a couple of breaths here, and then what he wants to do is keep the arms and the base exactly as it is, but bend the knees and drop the feet down to the floor behind the back. They can come one at a time. In fact, I suggest you take them one at a time. Yes. Very good. So now, what he can do, two things he can do. 
He can release the hands and place the hands flat on the floor. And then lift the head up a little bit, looking towards the feet. Yeah, so this is one thing. So he's lifting it up. It's quite an intense backward bend. He's pushing the chest far backwards um, to do this. And then try to raise one leg up, point your toes. See, he's moved the feet in a little closer to the hands as well. Very nice. And lower it down. And then raise the left leg up, point your toe. And lower it down. And then I'm going to give him an extra, like a gold star bonus thing to try. And you can try it also. Is to step one foot in closer to the hands and catch hold of one ankle with the hands. Just one side. Yeah. <laughs> he is really doing the job today. Okay. <laughs> so the next step is that you actually try to catch hold. One foot can stay further away. Catch hold of one ankle and then the other leg you lift it up. That is the full uh, awesome here. Okay, but it's a really deep backward bend, so you're ready for it. But you'll try what you feel comfortable with. Now, if you're not comfortable coming from the headstand, what you'll do, um, Rambo can show you, is you'll take your hands to the headstand position, which or headstand position rather, which is interlaced. You'll place the hands down. Uh, you can see he's lying on his back. And he'll come up this way just by um, place, yeah, lifting up, push up, come onto the crown of the head, yep. and the elbows come down to the floor. So you can see he did the same thing, but just lifting up from the mat. Okay, and then he can place the hands flat, and he can go through the same process, raising one leg. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so you have two ways to come. So I'd like you to try it now. Very good demo. Rest for a moment there, Rahul. <laughs> it's quite a deep backward bend. So I'd like you to try according to your comfort. You can come from the headstand, dropping the legs down one at a time, or you can come from your back. Okay, so either one will be the same end result as then. Okay? So you're interlacing the fingers, and yeah, Amen, that's good. But you want the elbows to be on the floor here, so it's not like Chakrasana. Okay, you place the the hand behind your head and you roll up onto the crown of your head. Yeah, if you're coming from the floor, that's what you're doing. Very good. Uh, Tara's got it. Reach a good elbows in a little closer to get the then you got it. Yes. Good. So those of you in the headstand, you can try bending your knees. Tip one foot over behind your back. Don't be afraid, like try to keep your arms steady, but just uh, taking one leg at a time, give it a try. It's not. Can you it. please, uh, sorry to interrupt, can you please demonstrate this once again, the second one? From the headstand or the second one? The second one. I'm, I'm unable to do high stand, so this is the variation. Thank you. Yeah, so you're going to lie on your back, bend your knees, take the feet in and then interlace the fingers and place the hands kind of behind the head like you would for the headstand and then you push with the legs and roll up onto the crown of your head so you're basically your head and arms are just like the headstand okay then what you can do is place the hands out flat on the floor and then raise one leg at a time so the first step yes so Rahul has lifted the head and then he's taking one leg up at a time pointing the toe and lower it down. And other leg up, point the toe. Good, lower it down. And then the next step you can try is to take one foot in close and catch hold of one ankle. A little bit tricky, but it's a, it's a good thing to try. Okay. Then, yeah, he's got it now. The other leg comes up, so it's kind of balancing. It's backward bending. It's all kinds of things. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. It's not easy, but I'm showing you, you can try. Okay, some of you can do, I know. So maybe Dorothy, you can try. I don't know if you've tried before. Tara, you can get it. But take it to your comfort level. Okay, now there was a question. I'm just going to take a look at that. Um, okay, I don't know why that would be a, an ache in your bicep. I'm not sure. You know, if, you know, we're basically doing the same hand positions as for the headstand. So it shouldn't be any different use of the body, but maybe because we're trying some different things, 
Um, you can feel that differently, but I don't, you know, sometimes too the body is um, kind of, we have ways in which the things don't exactly sit right because of our habits. You know, we carry heavy things or we walk in a funny way. So this can come out when we do asana and it can be that we're using the body in a different way. It can be that we start to feel it in a different way. But respect what your body is telling you to do. So you can, um, you know, you can modify a little bit so that you're not having that feeling. But I don't know the exactly why that would happen. Okay. So everyone's trying. Tara, that's good. So raising one leg up. And Sinta, good. So don't be discouraged by these things. When you try something different with a good spirit, you try to the extent that you can. And then what happens? We have to have an idea in the mind that we can do these things. Even maybe today I'm not doing it, but someday I can do. And when you have that attitude, very slowly the body starts to find a way to do these things. Um, it's basically like creating a pattern in the mind and saying, ah, okay, I can do this. So we take it step by step. But you're really warmed up now and ready for it. So I mean, actually that's good, give it a try. So I'll give just a little more time here for anyone who wants to try to try. If you need to rest, you can rest. Uvan, you have a little person there with you. She's very cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Good, Samir. Um, Kamaljit, I'm sure you can do it. Yeah, very good. So a lot of flexibility for this backward bend, so it's one of the deeper ones for certain. Okay. Now wherever you are, lowering down and pull your knees in towards your chest again, hug the knees in tightly. So just feel that you're gently rounding the lower back if you want to. Make a little circle or rock a little side to side or forward and backward. You can do that, but make sure that you're breathing here. That's the main thing. Okay. Now release your legs. And um, come up to sit again. We're going to rest now a little bit, so don't worry, the resting is coming. But rest on your abdomen in Makarasana. So stack your palms and rest on cheek bone palms, elbows very wide. Perfect. Let your big toes touch, heels drop to the side. Do a scan of your body from toes all the way up to Round of your head, make sure that every part is relaxed. And take a little care with your breathing here. So deeper abdominal breaths. Feel that you're using the diaphragm to make the breath. And just letting go for a few breaths. There's a lot of intensity to backward bends. In a sense, you know, as I said, you're preparing to move forward, like releasing tensions, move forward in life. It's quite symbolic. It's a kind of preparation of readiness, not a tension, but a readiness and openness to what is coming. We don't know what is coming, but that kind of strength, stability to face life. Now, press up for a moment and just rest on your elbows so that you're comfortable. So just resting on the elbows. And we're going to try something um, 
We're going to work towards the cobra, Bhujangasana. I'll demonstrate this myself, so I hope you can see um, well. I'll move in a second. So it's not the cobra, but it's a good way to prepare yourself for the cobra. And I find it's very, very helpful. So we're going to try a couple of things. So we'll start by uh, resting on your abdomen. And uh, you're up on the elbows now. You're just looking at me, so that's OK. So what you want to do is, uh, you can see what I'm doing in a way. My abdomen, my navel is on the floor. I'm lifting the hips up a little bit and taking them backward, almost as if I'm sliding the legs a little further away from myself. Now, what we'll do today is start by now lowering your forehead down to the floor, stretch your arms straight out in front like super. And then lift your head up and keep your elbows straight and start to walk in. Let me come down a little more so you can see me better. Okay, so arms are coming in, hands are stretched out a little bit wide, and I'm keeping the elbows perfectly straight, keeping the heels together at the back. So keep in mind this is a preparation. I'm not going to lift the shoulders up to the ears, I'm keeping them down away from the ears. And I'm trying my level best to keep the pelvis on the floor, to keep the navel on the floor. Elbows very straight and head is kind of neutral and relaxed. Okay, so breathing here. You should feel a compression in the lower back. If you want to, you can come up a little bit higher, take the hands in a little more. You can see fingers are stretched out quite wide, shoulders down. Head stays neutral, breathing here. Then make sure the legs stay together because you're just preparing. So feel all the muscles that you're using in the lower back, feel the compression there. Another couple of breaths here. And try to take a deeper breath. If, try to pay attention to a moment, to what I said before, so the chest and thoracic cavity is moving forward and the abdominal cavity or the pelvis moving down. So a change in direction there. And then walk your hands out forward and slowly come back down to the mat. Good. So resting there. Now, I'd like you to position your hands under your shoulders as you normally do for the cobra, Bhujangasana. But remember all the feeling that you had in the last exercise, the compression of the low back, the pelvis staying down. Okay? So position the hands under your shoulders, legs are together, fingers stretched out kind of wide. Uh, many people don't, in fact, use the hands really adequately. And they're right under the chest. Maybe imagine that they're in line with the heart. Okay? Yes, Shamala, that's perfect. Now breathing with an inhalation, lift your head up, chest up. Try to use the exhalation here to push the chest forward a little bit. And then inhale deeply again, try to boost the diaphragm. This kind of focusing on the breath really helps. So I'm going to come down a little bit. Too much use of the arm is not good here. So let the lower back compress. So it's not about achieving the asana or looking like triumphant or really high up there, but taking the attention inside. Uh, Sinda, that's very good. Shamala, very good. Um, Vidhi, your hands are too far forward. You can take them down more under the chest. Slide them down a little bit under the chest. Yeah, Vidhi. Okay, breathe and then slowly curl down. Good. Just rest for a couple of breaths here. So, how then you can um, join life in the practice? Now we'll come up one more time here today. 
but we're going to go for it a second time, <laughs> okay? So we're going to come into full uh, Purna Bhujangasana. So for that, separate your legs a little bit. In fact, they can come about as wide as your mat. It's probably quite good. So find with your feet the edges of your mat and take your hands further down your rib cage at the side of your body. So they're not anymore beside the heart, but further down to the bottom part of the ribs. Okay. And then breathing. Now with an inhalation, lifting your head, chest, ribs up, and then exhale, really go for it. Push the chest forward, bend your knees, and touch your own feet to your own head. But I want you to pay attention as you do this. So it's not like making supreme effort, but think about what you're doing. See if you can drop the pelvis a little bit. See if you can uh, flex the knees a little bit more. So that's where we get the feet closer to the head is when we bend the knees more. So try that. Very good. Breathe. And take care with that breath. It's hard to breathe here. So see if you can expand using the diaphragm in that breath. See if you can feel the difference between the chest and the abdomen. Drop the whole leaf. Good. Stay there for like three breaths. Yeah. He is Yeah. We want him to stay there. Good. Breathe. Sinda, that's good. So you're moving in the right direction. Don't be discouraged, but pay attention to the breath. Shamala, your legs were perfect there. Very good. Kamal, very good. Drop the pelvis a little, see what happens. So sometimes we think like we're afraid to let go. We want to push up, push up, push up, but sometimes by letting go, we go further into the asana. Okay, now straighten your legs and slowly curl down. Very nice, everyone. So rest. In Makarasana, turn your face the other way. Let your big toes touch so that prana is circulating nicely. Just breathe and relax. I like this new way of teaching. We have like pets and families and everything. It's quite nice. It's different. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Just breathe and let it go. Now, place your forehead down, bend your knees. We'll work on the bow now, Tanurasana, and we'll do it two different ways. And each time we'll focus a little differently. So, uh, but actually, let, no, let's do this first. So stretch your arms forward like Superman. I changed my mind, okay. Now, bend the right knee and reach back with the left hand and catch hold of the right ankle. So we do three things here. Okay. So you're holding the ankle with the opposite hand. So one leg stays on the floor in the back and one hand arm stays on the floor in the front. Um, okay, Dorothy, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the message. So now inhaling, raise your head up. One leg up, one arm up, the other leg, arm stay on the floor. Now the point here, but keep your elbow straight. So try to lift that leg up so high that you're shifting the weight onto the opposite hip. So one hip actually comes a little bit off the floor. So come a little more so we can see that. Hip is coming off the floor. Other side. There. So I want you to examine this feeling of having one hip coming off the floor a little bit. Yeah. 
Uh, Amen, that's good. Very good. And other hip mitsuyo. So the other hip is actually the right hip is lifting a little bit. You're shifting onto the left side. Very good. Kamala, you've got it. All mm -hmm. right. And then lowering down. And let's try the other side. So stretch both arms forward, both legs back. Bend the left knee. Reach back with your right hand. Hold the ankle. Good. Breathe here. Now with an inhalation, raise your head up and raise the left leg up so high that you shift onto the right leg. Now you're going to have a Shift the weight. Okay, that's it, Apple. You've got it now. Okay. Good. Breathe here. So one hip is really coming off the floor, and I want you to have that experience. That's why I'm emphasizing it. It's one hip lifting off. Good. And if you've not tried it before, maybe it's a little different, but see how it feels. Okay. And releasing down. Good. Just take a breath or two, relaxing here. Good. Now bring your forehead down, bend both knees, reach back with both hands, and hold on to your ankles. Regular hand hold. Nothing fancy here. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So Tara, please join us. Okay. All right, so holding the ankles in the usual way, forehead is down. When we come up, try to push the feet. So your only focus is pushing the feet up so high that you rest uh, more on the navel. Imagine that same sensation of having the hips actually lift off the floor. They may not, but try to feel it. So inhaling, lifting your head, chest, and legs up off the mat. Now push your feet up so high that you're moving forward. And some of you might actually feel the pelvic bones are coming away from or some of you, they'll stay down, and that's okay. But just have that same feeling of legs moving up so high. Imagine you're straightening your legs. That's very good. Breathe there. Kamo, perfect. Sinda, very good. Like this group. Okay, Nashi, perfect. Okay, then lowering down. And just take a breath or two. You can keep holding your ankles if you like. We're going to do one more different uh, version of the pose. Good. Now, second time coming up, what you'll do is hold your ankles, but try to hold a little further down the leg, just slightly away from the foot. You can take a look at what Rahul's doing, and he's keeping the feet in a flexed position. So the toe is not pointed, but the foot is flexed. So do, uh, Rashmi, you got it perfectly. Okay. You can take a look. Uh, Mitsuyo, that's perfect. Now this time, keep your thighs on the floor. So the thighs do not lift off the floor. Okay, so inhale. Lift your head up, chest up. Try to straighten the legs. So, amen, the thighs stay on the floor. Legs are on the floor. So, pulling back so much with the legs that your chest is lifting up high. Sinda, you got it perfectly. So, keep that going. Amshamu is good. Very nice. Imagine you want to straighten the legs all the way back. So, the chest is opening really high, but the Pelvis, the thighs, stay on the floor. Arashi, very good. Nakshi, good. Keep the feet in a flex position. That will help a lot here. And Tara, that's good. Amen, you've got it. It's just new. It's different. So straighten the legs a little bit. Pull your chest open. Yeah. Very good. Breathe here. Nicely done. And releasing. Good. So if you like, pull the heels in with your hands really close to the hips or try to touch your heels down to either side of the hips. So giving a stretch to your thighs here. Bend the elbows. Shamala, you got it. Rashmi, very good. Aman, perfect. Breathe here. Yeah. And release. Good. 
Now place your hands under your chest and push up to your hands and knees. And take a moment to stretch like a cat, round your spine, arch your back. Good. Good. Then bring your knees together, stretch back very long through your arms, pushing your hips back to your heels. And you can let your arms uh, rest by your side if you like, or keep the arms outstretched in front here. Um, I'll ask them again. This is, uh, just feel the spine and the arms making a nice straight line. It's in the perfect. Breathe and relax here, baby. That's good. So modernly, you can turn your video on so I can see your practice. Very good, there you are. <laughs> okay, all right. Now sit up on your heels. We're going to work on one more, one more awesome today, and that is uh, Kapotasana Pigeon. I think because it's a fairly complex backward bend, but you can stage it in many ways to your comfort level, okay? So we'll work on that a little bit, and um, you can just go as far as you feel comfortable, okay? But it's quite complex because it involves forward bending, backward bending, and twisting. So if you're sort of weak in any of those areas, you might notice it, it will, can be a little harder to do, but don't fear, okay? It's a good one to integrate daily into your own practice if you want to uh, if you want to try it. Okay, so what we'll do to start is uh, come up to your hands and knees. Maybe I'll do it a little bit from here. We'll do all this stuff up there. So hands and knees. And bring your right leg back, your left knee forward. So the foot is far enough away from the hip that it's not underneath the hip, it's not preventing the hip from reaching the floor. Okay, so breathing here. And the back leg, the knee is pointing straight down, chest is pointing straight forward, and walk your hands out. And just rest there. I'm going to keep a little bit to this here with the knees. So this is the preparation, this is the passive preparation. Now some of you, if a lot of flexibility is there, now, you know, first thing is first, keep the hips moving forward at the back, the knee is pointing straight down. But if it's starting to feel quite easy, you can, um, you can change the preparation in a sense that what you start to do is take this foot further away from the body. In fact, it can eventually come to a perpendicular position to the rest of the body. So, and for that, place one hand on the knee, one hand on the foot, and stretch this way. So, chest is up, you're preparing. It needs a little bit of openness of the hips, but some of you may be in a position to try that and that's okay. But don't push it, we want to keep the knees very safe. So we do that when the hips are ready. Uh, Amen, that's good, very nice. Make sure the back leg is straight down. Okay. So now walking your hands back in towards yourself. Uh, reach up, very good, I'm happy for you, that's good. So now, I'm taking the foot back in a little closer to the body so that um, it's a little bit easier. So the foot is, is in, but it's not under the hip. You can place both hands down on the floor. So here are the options for going a little further. Hands are down on the floor, chest is tall, or you can take the hands up to the knee, pushing against the knee, or you can bring the hands in front of your chest position, Rahul's got it. Okay, breathing here and taking a look at you again. So whatever you feel comfortable with, if you release the hands, you'll see immediately you're using the muscles of the lower back. Good. Samir, very good. Sinda. Okay, now bend the back knee and reach back with your the same side hand and catch hold of it. Yeah, in some way, I'm not saying any particular way, just catch hold of it. 
fit. So the next step is to try to flex that knee more, which means bring the foot in really close towards yourself and get used to that particular stretch. This is the next step. Uh, Meenakshi, that's good. Very good. Madhavi, you've got it already. Good. Very nice. Now, the next part will be how to hold your hand. If you want to go further here, how do you hold the hand? Right? So let me get myself in the position for that and I can show that clearly from here. So once the, the leg is bent and you pull it in really close towards yourself, you want to position the foot in a kind of flexed position. If you see my foot, Rahul can do the same. It's kind of flexed. It will make it easier. Then the hand on the same side, you turn that hand to face up like you're carrying a pizza. Um, I'm Canadian, so I think about the pizza sometimes, <laughs> or a tray, you're, you're carrying it from underneath. And you bring that hand up, turn around behind yourself. Now, you can catch hold underneath the foot somehow. So I'm coming right underneath that flexed foot and holding on. Some people will catch hold of the toes with their hands, some people will catch hold of the big toe. Either one is okay, but this hand is facing up, elbow is facing up. So you take it under the foot, you catch hold of what you can, pull the foot now in very close again. And you can see the toe starts to point, I pull it in close. Okay, then the next step is that I start to move the elbow out and up. So holding on to the toe, that's it, Cindy, you got it. But move the elbow out, now down, out, and up. So just imagine that hand with the palm turning up, Kamal, you've got it, holding underneath, pull the foot in very close, and then the elbow is turning out, and up. Right. Very good. So Rahul looks like he's comfortable here. He can eat his lunch in this position. Okay. Very good. So it's a little that hand position. The first couple of times it doesn't make sense, but afterwards it starts to make sense to you. Okay, so you're using the body as leverage in a certain way to pull yourself into the backward bend. Let's try the other side. So come up to your hands and knees. Very good. Now take the right knee forward and the left leg back. And we take a little time passively, some stretching here first, okay? So the right knee forward, foot is out just far enough that it's not under the hip, it's not preventing the hip from coming down. And the back leg needs to be facing down, so the knee facing straight down to the floor, no Bollywood things going on here. Okay, knee is straight down, that's it. Cinda, that's good. And when you're practicing this at home, really take your time approaching. Allow the body to get comfortable, okay? If you're in a hurry, you know, the chances are you can strain something, but if you're, if you're warmed up and if you're approaching slowly, then you get a lot of benefit. So walk the hands out forward and just passively rest here a little bit. And in fact, if you want to get comfortable here, you might just do this passive preparation every day, incorporate it in your practice, and you'll see a lot of benefits, a lot of opening in the body when we come to backward bend. Very good, and actually that's good. Good, now walk your hands in towards yourself. And again, either hands can be down on the floor to either side of your knee, perfect, lifting the chest up tall, or you can place both hands on your knee, do the same thing, lift up, or take your hands away from the floor and place them in front of your heart, then you're using the muscles there. Mitsuyo, very good. Yeah, even just releasing for a second. Vidhi, very good. Richa, very good. Proud of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then uh, supporting yourself with the hands again, and we'll move to the back leg. So bend your knee, catch hold with the same side hand and try to pull it in very close. 
how to hold in any way, no particular way, just however you can. Pull that booty in very close and feel the stretch to the front of your thigh. So this is the next stage that you can spend time here, breathing, allowing the body to get comfortable. You spend it here. Very good. Now we can move to the hand position. It's called the full hand hold. And to go further, we kind of need to know how to do that. So you'll take the hand on the same side as the, bend, as the back leg, with the palm facing up. Flex your foot there so it's easier to catch hold of something. And take the hand around underneath. Rahul's doing it perfectly, holding under the toe. Or you can catch hold of the big toe or the other toes. Then pull the foot in very close. You see he's keeping the shoulder down. Elbow is in tight. And then he's pulling the foot close towards himself. And then the, the elbow will rotate out and up. Yeah. Uh, Shamala, that's good. So try to move, move the, you're ready for it. Move the elbow out. You've got it. And up, still moving that toe. You're almost there. It's perfect, actually. Good. Uh, Priyanka, you're holding the wrong part of the... Ah, no, you've got it now. You've got it now. That's good. Yes, Priyanka. Um, actually, yes, very good. This is a very good asana. When you practice the pigeon, Sapota asana, you're really opening the body in so many different ways at once. It incorporates so many different elements. It's really good to integrate in your practice daily if you want to sort of increase the flexibility just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then that's good. You're shaking your head. I need to keep more. All right. Now come back to your hands and knees. And we'll come now to a final relaxation. So just take a moment to stretch like a cat around your spine by tucking your chin, tucking your tailbone under, and then arching your back with your head up. Your stick it out. Good rounding, tucking one more time. Good. And stretch long, taking your hips back to your heels, keeping the arms outstretched in front. Just take a breath or two here. Good. And then turn over and now rest on your mat for final relaxation. Actually, let's do this. So sit on your mat with your legs out in front. And this is the nice way to come out after the back of it. Reach your arms forward, but make your back really round, really round, and then slowly curl your back. Placing each vertebra down on the floor. Good. So you can relax with us. Feet wide apart. Palms open. If you feel that you need to shake any part of the body out a little bit, you can do that. If you feel that you need to tense any part of the body and let it go, you can do that. Uh, that should be good. So it can be very individual what we need to let go of here. For everyone else, do a little scan of the body from feet all the way up. Make sure that you're not holding any tension. Allow your breathing to be very slow, steady, gentle, very natural breathing now. And now try to remain still through the body. Any thought that comes in the mind to move, try to ignore that thought. 
Instead, we'll focus through the body. So start by consciously focusing on and relaxing the surface of the body. Relaxing the skin, each of the hairs, eyebrows, and scalp. Relaxing the tissues, muscles, ligaments, and joints. Relaxing the bones, the structure of the body is completely relaxed. Focusing a little deeper inside, relaxing the kidneys, bladder, liver, Relaxing the stomach, heart, and lungs. Relaxing blood circulation. Relaxing the brain, the nerves, focusing a little deeper still, relaxing the mind. a little space within the body. Imagine a little space and potential within the mind. Interesting in that space which you have created for yourself. Peaceful. Conscious.
deeper breath. Very slowly wake your body. Start by moving your toes and fingers, your hands and feet. Slide your feet together, extend your arms gently over your head. And release. And rolling to your side and pressing up to sit on your mat. And with the prayer. You can join me if you're familiar with the prayer. We inhale to begin. Okay, sorry, can you ask the question again? Yeah, uh, so the chakras in the second variation, which uh, were uh, between like in the uh, extent position. So the second option, so how would it yeah. work? Because I was pinching on my little finger by right hand. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, there's no really easy way. That, that's all by one way is to come kind of from the headstand, right? But um, there's no really easy way to do, to do that. It's just, you know, you want to be using the elbows more, which requires a little bit of the flexibility to be using the elbows in that way. So, um, 
just with a little practice, you know, maybe you, you come a little onto the crown a little more quickly, the crown of the head and, and the elbows, so you're not placing the weight on the hand. As with anything, like it, when you're sort of trying it, you're using the body in different ways, and so yeah, it can be like different kinds of pressure that we're not used to. But um, with a little practice, you could pitch your, your fingers there. They're <laughs> always okay. So like it's like with a little bit of practice, it's okay. So yeah. So just keep trying that. But I would say like, you know try to come a little more. Keep your elbows in the right place. If the elbows are out here. For sure, you're going to be more weight on those hands. But when the elbows come in, you can come pretty quickly onto the crown of your head, and then the weight is in the right place. So, yeah, but you did really well, Samir, with the practice. So, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Thank you, Katie. I put so much pressure on the head when I was trying to come. So, should I like uh, try to put more pressure onto my arms because there is a lot of pressure on the head? In the same asana, right? Yes, the same. Yeah. So if you need to, like, are you practicing the headstand, Vivian, already? No. Okay. 